I'm sitting in this uh, room which we call the music room. Uh, 49 years later, uh, at least 49, might be a little bit more or less. I'm, I'll be 81 next week and June the 18th. And uh, I've got great happiness coming and sitting in this lovely room. Uh, near the window, not the bay window part, but the other window facing Robert Street, uh, and also going right out, extending out into the room into the corner of the panelled uh, wall, uh, was the Bluesner Baby Grand Piano, which I used to do my an hour in the morning arpeggios and an hour at night the songs because I was doing uh, uh, music, singing and harmony for the leaving certificate. There was a lounge chair over, a big lounge chair, a lounge over towards the uh, bay, against the bay window, and a lounge, a separate little lounge chair over in the corner. And in the middle was a most beautiful carved table, huge carved table. Uh, it, it occupied a huge amount of room in the, in the middle of the room and carved legs and it carved all around the side. Now, over here was my father's uh, low boy. The double bed was here. Now, this fireplace, I came in here before when we came with the library people and they've altered it because I told Mr. Tootser about something and he might have altered it because since I've told him it's been altered. Just a moment. I don't know. This used to, no, you can bring it back, it's not been altered. This used to go back, go forward and back, and Mum used to place secret things in there, in behind that wall, behind that fire. See how this little door thing can move it back. Whether it can now, I don't know. She used to do that. Now, over where you are, Costa, there was two wardrobes. Uh, a wardrobe there and, and a low boy there. And uh, there were two, two beds, a dressing table in the, in, the, in the middle and a bed this side and a bed that side, right? And when my grandmother came up, she often stayed in one of the beds. And unfortunately, because my father took the chimneys down, he shouldn't have, the starlings got in and once I got lice because they came through the chimney into the room. Oh, you see what I mean? Terrible. That's shocking. Yes, he, he shouldn't have taken the original chimneys down. Mm. You see? When I came up with my... First of all, it was my brother's room. I'll explain about him. He had a double bed here dressing table over there and bookcase which my father made here and a big study desk here where he did his studying. And, uh, and then when I came up, we had three beds, well a, a cot first of all for the baby, but we had, and the, uh, uh, there were three beds, so I had two, two girls, three beds, single beds along this room we eventually had. and. The dressing table was over there, what I can recall. Where I am here? Yes. It had toys and things all in this room for them, of course. It's changed quite a bit, hasn't it? Yes. That's right, yes. 
As far as the roof and them goes, everything's pretty much the it, same, it, though, it isn't it? It is the same, yes. And the, uh, outside here too, with the bed, when it was uh, fireworks night, we used to stand, the children and I, and we'd stay up till about 12 o'clock and we'd, and the children, you know, about 8 or 10, and we used to stand on the, on the bed and we'd see all the fireworks over Sydney Harbour. Oh, it would have been a good view from here. Yeah, marvellous. Yeah. Wow. Something unforeseen happened in this house, in this place. I pushed her, but then I went back in. There's a little table back here. When I turned around, Cheryl, who was about three and a half, I don't think she was five, about three and a half, she was, well, flat out like that. She had her hands as if she was flying. And she, and so Marion couldn't have pushed her. Now, what was this unforeseen thing that happened into this place? Something you can't explain. And she was flying and she, she was, had her hands over like that. She was going over the edge. Now, she wouldn't, a normal child of that age could not could fall over unless they climbed over, but she was flying up in the air. And I, we used to do all these exercises before, uh, at half past seven to eight o'clock before, and I lunged forth and grabbed her legs and threw her to the ground and threw myself to the ground. And I remember they were running down the steps laughing, the two children, and just young children, forgotten all about it. And I, staggered into that bedroom, which was my brother's, which was our bedroom, and I lay down on the bed near the window, and I was in a state of shock. State of shock, till um, my mother came home from church, Moorfields Church, she said, with my father, she said, why haven't you got the chops on, you know, and meat chops, um, uh, lamb chops? And I said, Mum, I said, Marion, Push Cheryl, uh, she nearly fell over the, but it wasn't Mary now. I realised that it couldn't have been Mary because it happened. Mary just accidentally dodged, she dodged past her and she couldn't have pushed her over the steps over because Cheryl's only about this, this high, she couldn't have got over. So, unless she was five years old, she still couldn't have because I couldn't even fall over the steps at my height. Do you see what I mean? So, it was something, some force in this place, I'd say it was evil force. This is Costa Dunas. I'm here with Mel Claudia Dibden, daughter of Mel Claude Fletcher, former owner of the Towers. Okay, Mel, what year did you move into the house? 1942. When you first move on to the property, how far did the land extend to compared to the present day? It's exactly the same as it was when we moved into the house. How long did you live in the house for? I lived from age 13 to 25. Then I came back from the country when I was 27, 22 years. What year did you move into the house? 1942. Did you have any siblings? My brother and my sister. Were they older or younger than you? My brother, who's a doctor, is 14 months older than me. Mm -hmm. And my sister, 10 and a half years younger than me. There is a rumour that there is a ghost that lingers in the house. Is that true? No, but I'm not certain because Jenny told me she's had strange feelings and I've had different things that have happened to me yeah. and uh, I've, got a, I've got it all written down about how I saw Jesus up there. And then there was another occasion when Marion 
beach Cheryl and I went to smack her on the top of the landing of the steps and she bumped her but it was just the top of the steps you know you know it up there don't yeah. you but I turned back towards the wall which is next door next to the bedroom that's facing the uh, basketball area and when I turned around my daughter had her arms straight out she was only about three and she was going right over the uh, the banister my people were at church and and uh, and when and I was taught we did exercise the PLC pimple and I lunged forth. I knew how to do that. And I grabbed her legs and threw her to the ground and I threw her to the ground. And then all I remember they went running down the steps. And I sort of staggered into a room, was in a state of shock. When mum came home, I she asked me why I hadn't put on the chops and I could hardly talk. And I can't imagine it was some phenomenal thing because a three-year-old couldn't get higher than the, the banister and I still don't know how that happened. And then the time about when Jesus came into the same room as Mr. Tassunas and I composed words to the music of Mendelssohn, I've got to, to, to talk about that later. Wow. What was the main layout of the house before it was renovated into a school? Yes. The front door, <coughs> pardon me, we very rarely used. Now, Mr. Toots's room was, uh, which has still got the old fireplace, the cosy fire there, mm -hmm. that was, it, wouldn't, it had a beautiful table, I've got the photographs, and carved, cave, carved legs and all, but we used that as a lounge room, but it was called the music room. It had, not in the bay window, pacing Forsyth Street, that was a big long lounge chair. It had a Bluth and a Baby grand piano in that area where the window is facing Robert Street, a big huge Bluth and a Baby grand piano. Uh, behind the door was a beautiful, huge bookcase, glass bookcase, furniture, uh, wood, but also glass in the doors. And that cupboard in there was a servery for the maids to put the food in when the Forsyth owned it. Uh, you'd open the door and the food would come from the hall. Now, uh, that was the room we yeah. had there, yeah. you see. So to the right where the office is currently, currently? Where you uh, come in, where you come in the door, to the left is Mr. No, you said that, you want to know the right. To the right where the office is now, what did that used to be? That used to be two rooms, they had big huge doors dividing them and my father put them in the harness shed, there's a harness shed we used to be there and I think he took the doors off, he didn't want them in the room and uh, and that room was a dining room, very rarely used over against the wall this side was a, a big sideboard and uh, it's a huge big beautiful table in there and chairs which we have when we had Christmas there and things, Christmas dinner. And on the other side, they made it into one huge room. It used to be divided by huge, big, beautiful doors. Uh, it was a TV and lounge room. The other room where Mr. Tootsis was where we stayed at, uh, where we had uh, on music room and also on Sunday night.